welcome to Lemonster Access Television and Lemonster, a present to the future. Uh, our video visit uh, to uh, focusing on the neighborhoods Lemon featuring the Lemonster signs where we visit the past, we interview people of the present with an eye to the future. We are creating an historical document. That's one of our purposes. Uh, eventually, we hope to include photographs of the neighborhoods, uh, videos of the neighborhoods, and even a we will be including uh, an historical uh, piece also, a formal historical piece. And our package will be uh, one of the Lemonster neighborhoods, uh, focusing on most of the Lemonster neighborhoods as indicated by the signs which uh, people have seen uh, displayed around the city. My name is Bob Sardelli of the Lemonster Historical Commission, and I am pleased to welcome today our guests, Mr. Gilbert Tremblay and Mr. Lawrence Poyer. Uh, Gil grew up on, on French Hill, and Larry uh, spent much of his childhood on French Hill. And that is the focus of today's program, the French Hill neighborhood of Lemonster. And I'm going to direct my first question to Gil. Gil, where, for newcomers to Lemonster, is French Hill? Well, I would say it starts on Mechanic Street just after you cross the railroad tracks downtown. And it runs all through along Mechanic Street and the side streets from Old Laurel Street on all the way past 12th Street and all, also running, it would be eastward toward Spruce Street and Water Street. So that whole area, I would say, is what's called French, French Hill. French Hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most prominent feature of French Hill would probably be the beautiful St. Cecilia's Church. Mm -hmm. So that is the French Hill area. Yes. Um, Larry, why is it called French Hill? Well, when I was a youngster on French Hill, uh, there was no English. All the stores, everybody spoke French. Uh, and there was nothing but French people there. There were a few other nationalities, but as a kid, I thought sh for sure the Pacusis were French because they lived on <laughs> French Hill. And they spoke French. And they spoke <laughs> French. <laughs> so that uh, it was predominantly all French people. And I think this is a, this is a good point in the interview, the oral history, to, to ask this question. Uh, did these people uh, come directly from France, or how did people come to French Hill? They came from the province of Quebec. The original? original the original people came down because Quebec was in, in destitute, and they came down here because there was the factories were employing these people. So one family came down, and they brought down three other families, and it was all French. So, Lem so Lemonster in the United States was a land of opportunity land for of the immigrants. Right. Now, uh, did the people just come from Quebec, or were there any other areas of, uh, of Canada from which they came? Can I direct this question to mm -hmm. Gil? Sure. There were some from New Brunswick, and as the years have gone on, there have been more coming from New Brunswick, actually, than from the province of Quebec, so that today, the younger people on French Hill who are still French are mainly people from New Brunswick, rather than the province of Quebec. Now, would that be Acadian French? Yes. Is that what it's yes. called, mm -hmm. Acadian French. And there is a difference in the dialects that they speak. Uh, uh, interesting, interesting. Um, Larry, during what era were you a child? In, when we, was it pre-World War II? Was it the Depression era? What well, period uh, in history? I remember French Hill in my, from the 30s, 1930s. 1930s. And on. Okay. Because, you know, I was five years old, so I remember going with my dad at his store and whatnot. So, so I, that, that would have been the Depression era. That's right. And, and pre-World War II. And Glenn, uh, Gil. <laughs> Larry's a little bit older than I am, but I would say I'm more like the mid-30s. I was born in 1933. But I was born right there on 3rd Street, literally born on 3rd Street. Not at Lemonster Hospital. Not at no. Lemonster Hospital. No, I was born at home. And, yeah. and, and from a previous interview that we did uh, from another neighborhood, Lincoln Terrace, that was typical at that time. Many oh, yeah. 
people were born at home. And that's a big contrast between now and the present and those days. Uh, you know, most, most people, most births are at the hospital today. Uh, whereas it, uh, yeah. in those days, it was very common to be born at home. Um, did you venture out from your neighborhood very much? Let me direct this to first to Larry. Did you pretty much stay uh, in? Oh yeah, we stayed. We stayed. We stayed on French Hill, but because of my father's occupation, I did wander. Not wander, but with him, I'd go into the other parts of Now, what of the was city. his occupation? He ran a grocery store, a meat gro market. A meat market on French Hill? On French Hill. On French Hill. And he, he used to deliver deliver orders. And at one time, he had a truck that'd go from house to house oh, selling, selling meats and whatnot. So uh, as a kid, I guess I went throughout the city of Lemons, but older French Hill was my territory. That, was, I mean, your, that, that was, was your territory. That was it. Gil, what about you? Did you wander <clears throat> very much? Not, not as a young child, certainly, but as I got a little bit older, I <clears throat> remember one of the things we used to do was go to the Plymouth Theater, oh, yeah. and I started doing that, well, with friends when I was probably nine or ten years old. One of the great things was to see the Hopalong Cassidy movies. <laughs> and I see them now on, on television. <laughs> they are so bad. <laughs> and I also remember in the early days of the war going up to Ames Butter Store downtown and standing in line to buy butter because butter was in scarce supply. And they would have it, I think it was 19 cents a pound. And my father and grandparents would send me up to stand in line and buy a pound of butter. This was when butter was rationed? Or? It was rationed. rationed. 1942, maybe 43, but in those days, yeah. 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 Ralph yeah. Crossman, the ex Ralph man. Crossman ran the store, ran exactly, the store. Ames Butter Store. So you, a as a child, Gil, uh, you would, when you get old enough, would venture beyond <laughs> the confines of the French Hill area. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's so different today. Uh, with transportation and mm -hmm. uh, families have a car generally or sometimes more than one sometimes all the members of the family who are old enough to drive have a, have a vehicle uh, but in those days it was was a car in the family sort of a rarity L Larry let me well just an example of that thing the house that I lived on on Fort Street my dad owned it there was a six family house there was one automobile in it it was my father's and then another man moved in, and he had a car, Emil Latat. Oh. He used to run the bowling alley mm -hmm. on 3rd Street. He moved in, he had an automobile. Next door, Mr. Cormier, six apartment building, one car. The next one to that, I, there, there was no cars in it. Oh. Mr. Cody had one car with six families. So cars were, you know, were, were rich. Well, how did, uh, other than walking, uh, and I'll bet people did a lot of walking in those days, and bicycles and so on, how did, uh, you, how did families Lo get around if they had Lovell, to? Lovell bus. The Lovell, Lovell bus. bus went by every, about every half hour mm -hmm. down Mechanic Street, as far as 9th Street, or 6th Street when I was a kid, 6th Street, go up 6th Street to Water Street and back, back downtown, and then they would go up West Street and back, and just made that figure eight all day long, all night. So you said the Lovell Bus Company. Lovell Bus Company. Different from the FNL. That's right. Okay, Lovell. So there was a Their Lovell. garage was off of Willard Street and Lancaster Street. Ah, interesting. Um, when you did eventually, as you got a little <laughs> older, uh, and, and I imagine your, your life centered around home and school, uh, school being probably St. Cecilia's. Uh, mm -hmm. The, the parochial school, but from when you got old enough and you got out, you graduated from the eighth grade, did now, Gil, you went to May Gallagher Junior High and you mm -hmm. rubbed elbows with, so to speak, <laughs> with kids from other neighborhoods. Yes. Larry, did, did you, you, did you go to uh, St. Cecilia's? I went to St. Cecilia's till the sixth grade and my mother took me out and sent me to uh, Gallagher Junior High School. My grand, I don't know if I should even say this, my grandmother, who lived on Mechanic Street, right where I live now, couldn't speak English and whatnot, and I remember my grandmother going over, because mm -hmm. my mother was sending me to, 
to the school uptown, you know, and boy, that was bad. I was going, you know, because I was going to start meeting, I was going to meet Italian boys and be careful, they throw stones and, and this is no kidding. Oh, I know. The Jewish boys, they hung Christ and whatnot and to add a little bit to this thing, the first day I'm at there sitting across the street from this, now the police station in my shots and a kid comes, sits alongside of me and uh, He's kind of nervous too, so I asked him, what's your name? Levi Gradito. Oh my God, there's one of them Italian boys. And I, he asked my name and I told him, you know, same thing, his grandmother warned him because he's from Lincoln Terrace. And I'm sure that if you know Levi Gradito, the good Lord never put a nicer man on this earth than Levi Gradito. All right, All right. And but, you know, she's my grandmother. Hey, boy, he's Italian, you know, you gotta be careful. So, I'm so, sorry, no, that's, but, that's, uh, but that that's, was that's something that really hasn't changed because children learn prejudices. Yeah, well, it's, it's, you know, yeah. sadly, You're right. You're sadly, right. yeah. uh, and uh, but we're progressing. We hope. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we are, are progressing. We are. We are, you know, as time goes by. But, I can tell uh, a similar story. Uh, <clears throat> a good friend of mine, even to this day, is Ernie Capone, and Ernie grew up on Walker Street. Yeah, which sure. is the extension of 3rd Street. As it crosses Mechanic, it becomes Walker Street. Right, it's right there. Yeah. Exactly. We are the same age, within three months of one another or so. We never met until uh. I went to Gallagher <laughs> in ninth grade. Yeah. And Ernie finds that very, very interesting, how Mechanic Street was almost a dividing line. Right. And I think the second or third day of junior high school, I was walking up Mechanic Street, ready to go up to junior high school, and who do I see coming down Walker but Ernie? who's in class with me. Oh, you live there? Yeah, so we became friends. We'd walk to school together, walk home together. And, but you're right, up to that point, it was, boy, it was a revelation to go to the junior high school and meet kids from other uh, areas yeah. and find they were just kids yeah. like the rest of us. Right. That's, that's what life was about. It was, it was. My, my grandmother came from Canada and, and she never left. She thought, she thought the United States was French Hill because there was no place she had to go that she couldn't go, and everybody spoke French to her. Mm -hmm. George Naimi spoke French. Spoke better French than he did English, I think, <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So they so were... As time uh, has, has gone by, you know, the mm -hmm. America, the, one right. of the uh, models, the melting pot, uh, which is a good thing. Oh, which absolutely. Which is a wonderful right. thing. Um, we're talking about, uh, now I'm gonna direct this to Larry. Larry, you said your uh, grandmother didn't have to really leave French Hill because everything was there that she needed. Uh, in our conversation, just prior to the interview, I, I, I learned something uh, every time I do these. Uh, you mentioned to me the variety of businesses on, uh, that street on uh, Third Street. Third, Third street. street. Could you, could you uh, tell, inform our audience about that? I found that most interesting. Well, when I was a kid, I'll take, a, I'll take them up Third Street if I can. <clears throat> the old school building was behind the church. Huh? St. Cecilia's. St. Cecilia's. Next door was the Lamarts Hall, which was a, uh, a gathering place for people. <clears throat> in, the bil in, in, the, in the building was a donut shop. Uh, Lamont ran a variety store. Lamont ran a Third Street Drug. Next door was a barber shop. There was a grocery store. Mr. Lamont had a uh, cobbler shop mm -hmm. there. A and P. The A and P store was on Third Street. There was a, uh, um, a uh, another grocery store. Next door was my father's grocery store, Garropy Furniture. Next to that was this guy lived in Vac. And George Naimi ran a clothing store. Uh, there was a, a uh, grocery store next door to that. Aubuchon Hardware. Then there was Frank Vizina ran a variety store. That was before you remember. Barrier store. Mm -hmm. There was a barber <clears throat> shop. There was a, a Nell Levesque ran a, a little coffee shop. Mr. Parquet ran a variety store on the corner. Across from that was the First National. There were fir three First Nationals on French Hill. Wow. And they're all well, gone. They're, they're all, they're, they're yeah. all, and that's just on one street. I'm not taking in the, the, whole, the barber yeah. shops and the beauty parlors and uh, 
So people didn't leave. They, didn't. they needed a pair of shoes, they went to George <laughs> Nimey. Mm -hmm. They needed a pair of overhauls, they went to George Nimey. Yeah. They needed a bedroom set, they went to Garropy. Correct me so, if I'm wrong, the only thing they couldn't do was banking. Banking. Yeah. They, they, my grandfather used to go downtown That's right. to the bank. But the I bank. don't think people did an awful lot of banking no. during the Depression. <laughs> banking, <laughs> there was right, no money. right, that was, that was Banking money. in city, city Hall. In City Hall, that's right. Yeah, that's the only thing that went up. That's the only thing my grandmother went uptown for. Is, is, but she never went to the bank because she had kids. Her oldest mm -hmm. boy was about 18 or 19 when she came from Canada. Now, Larry, in your era, I know that Gil, even as a, a nine or ten year old, used to go see Hopalong Cassidy at the, <laughs> at the Plymouth. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> when did you ever venture out during your era to the, to oh, the movie yeah. theaters? And, and what theaters were in Lemonster at that time? Sunday afternoon, after catechism. After catechism. <laughs> you always went uptown because you had, you had the uh, 15 cents, 10 cents to get in, 5 cents to buy the popcorn. So you'd go either to the Plymouth Theater, the Metropolitan Theater. I even remember the gym on Pleasant Street. Really? Okay. Oh. I remember. I remember going there a couple of times, and and, and the Rialto. And, and the Rialto is of those the only building that still is the Rialto is, is the Rialto Theater, which was the Lemonster Rec Center, right. and now it's, right. it's, it's a mortgage company and mm -hmm. a, and a, and a uh, yeah, it's a, a church. Church. Yes. Uh, in fact, if you look at the Rialto, if you look at the facade of that building and you're in traffic and you're stopped and you have time, or if you're walking, you can still see the RT on the front of that building where they must have had bronzed uh, big initials. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Metropolitan Theater is gone. gone. The Plymouth <coughs> Theater is gone. Is gone. And uh, now I, I heard that the, I didn't, the Capitol, does that ring a bell? Yep. Capitol, was that where the gem was or were those two no, different? No, there, there was a theater on Pleasant Street <coughs> That's gone too. Yeah, uh, but uh, there was a theater there, and there was also a theater on Main Street, right next door to the bank building. Now <clears throat> that building is gone, but mm -hmm. Woolworths was down. Said, yeah. I do not remember that as an operating uh, operating uh, store. But around the corner was the Lemonster Hotel, uh, on the so corner of Water Street. So the, the changes yeah. that have occurred. Uh, yeah. Larry talks about going to the movies after catechism. <laughs> that was required. Two o'clock on Sunday afternoon, you went to school, to your own classroom with the nun for religious instruction. And then after that, you would go to the movie. That was not a real problem because the movies ran continuous shows on Sundays. Well, when Abbott and Costello movies were scheduled, that was such a big attraction. We used to run to the Plymouth Theater, they open the doors, they start selling tickets at 1.30, buy tickets, then run back to catechism for 2 <laughs> o'clock, but we had tickets. So then at 3 o'clock we could get in, Sorry. and then we might stay, might stay to see the movie run twice because it was continuous. So it was, and, and would there be just one feature, would there be a double feature? A double feature, plus the news, cartoons. Cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> and advertisements. And, and, and would there be a cereal? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. that was on Saturday. That on, was a sad Saturday, Saturday cereal. That's you back the, yep. the next week, which I'm mm -hmm. sure you would have come back anyway. Oh, yeah. uh, even well, that cost 10 cents. That. But 10 yes. cents. Yes. And, and, and for, uh, for candy bars, if you were smart, you got together with another friend and pooled your nickels. Yeah. And you went to the First National, and you could buy three candy bars for a dime. Wow. So <laughs> <laughs> we each had one and a half candy bars. You have the times changed. Uh, oh, yes, indeed. Uh, and I'll bet the candy bars were larger they, than they were they bigger are today. than the 50 cent bars today. That's right. Um, what else did you do for entertainment as as kids? Uh, games and things. Uh, today we have organized leagues and we have all sorts of things. And, and families with cars are bringing the kids here, there, and everywhere. In those days, did you make your own entertainment? Did you have pickup <laughs> games? Uh, what did you do? Let me direct this to Larry first. Well, first of all, on French Hill. Uh, there was, a, uh, in the wintertime, there was the bright spot on 7th Street. Mm -hmm. There was a skating place. In the summertime, you could play croquet or tennis there. We played baseball in the street all the time because there, no, there were very, very few cars. We lived on 4th Street, and every once in a while, somebody would call, so 
Buster Matthews, the cop would come down on his motorcycle on Mechanic Street, and when he turned in to Fourth Street, he yelled, race his motorcycle, so his kids would all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, yeah, we were, we were, we had a lot of fun. I guess we had a lot of fun, oh, yeah. clear fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there was no organized sport. There was no to nothing. To the degree that we yeah. have today. <clears throat> and yet you had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, you had yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gil. Yeah, it's the same thing. There were, in the first place, there were a lot of kids. So you never were lacking for, for company. And you just got together and did things. We did play baseball in a lot behind St. Cecilia's Church, yeah. literally a sand lot. But as, as Larry said, there was skating. You could go um, sliding on the hill at Wells Court or on the hill at Whitney Sixth Field. Huh? And 6th Street Hill, Sixth which Street. went down the other way towards, right. toward the Italian district. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. if you were really daring, you might even go up to Rice Hill. Yes. Which, yes. which is marked by a sign yes. now, too, isn't it? The, the further end of Mechanic Street. Those hills seemed so big then, <laughs> seem so small today. <laughs> Another activity we had, and Gil is too young to remember this. <laughs> I'm, when, I'm too young for something. Then. Some of the, behind St. <laughs> Cecilia's Church, there was the public dump. Yes. Oh, I remember that. You remember the oh, public certainly. dump? Certainly. Well, if you remember down below, Joe Lamora had a junkyard down there, a man by the name of Lamora. Oh, that and I don't had, remember. No. He had cars in there, so us kids at night, I've driven to California many times <laughs> down there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of cars, I have to ask you, someone had asked me to ask you about this, and we talked a little bit, a reed car. They said, ask Larry Poyer about a reed car, R-E-E-D, right. car. My father and his brother Archie, they were 15, 16 years old, they worked at the Reed, Whitney Reed Company, and they had an old automobile. Now, I don't know if it was a running car or not, but they took the body off of the thing, and they made a body out of reed for this car. And I have pictures, the home of that, of them sitting in this car. They made a, you know, a, like a big baby carriage. <laughs> the it's Whitney a, Reed. Uh, Whitney was made out company. of reed. Yeah. We'll we'll have to at some point maybe get a copy of that picture the, yeah, the, the yeah, it, it, for both the historical commission and the historical society. Mm -hmm. um, the, do you remember any major celebrations in Lemus, like big events? Uh, they can be happy events or sad ones like the hurricane, uh, the, the floods uh, during your era. Can you, can you tell us about that? Let me direct it first to, to Gil. I remember the hurricane in 1938 vividly because I remember my father carrying me in his arms upstairs to go to spend the time with my grandparents. We lived downstairs in the same house. And I remember thinking the wind was going to blow me away. Later, I found out the reason he brought me upstairs, because my mother was giving birth to my sister. Ah. And so my sister was born the day after the hurricane. hurricane. That's why I can remember. On September 24th, she was born, 1938. I remember that vividly. I also remember a much happier occasion, VJ Day. Victory over Japan. Victory over Japan. I remember coming downtown, and the whole downtown area, Monument Square, was just filled with people celebrating. I remember how exciting that was. It must have been yeah. an exciting occasion. Larry. I, I think that the, the celebrations, I think I remember, again, Gil was too young for this thing here. In 1932, when yeah. they dedicated St. Cecilia's Church, ah the new church. I remember that very vividly, seeing the bishop bishop there, and my father was one of the honor guards, and this, and that was a big, big celebration mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. That, if, if you ask me that, I, I, don't remember, yeah. I, I don't remember anything else. I can else see why that would be very, very memorable. That was, to me, it was... Yeah, a, all those, those events, mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, the... We mentioned if possibly getting a uh, picture of that Reed car, copy of it for both the Historical Society and the Historical Commission. And uh, I'm a member of the Historical Commission. I'm also, I've, I'm a member of the Historical Society. Gil, there's a lot of confusion. 
uh, between those two fine organizations. Can you clarify the difference uh, for uh, the public? I'll try to. The Historical Commission is a city commission. Members of that commission are appointed, as you were, by the mayor. And they have headquarters in the old Gallagher building, and they see to it that uh, all such things as historical landmarks are preserved. They have uh, essentially an official function. Right. The Historical Society is a private society. Anybody can become a member. All you have to do is pay dues. We welcome new members. And I happen to be on the board of the Historical Society. We are located in the old field school, which is the little red brick building on School Street just behind the yeah, Gallagher yeah. building. There is often confusion between the two, but we are both working for the same things to preserve the history of Leminster. And uh, I might add that uh, the Historical Society, wonderful people. Uh, of course. <laughs> for, for, uh, most interesting, if anyone has, uh, uh, particularly retired people, people, you don't have to be retired, but if you're looking for something very, very interesting to do, uh, I highly recommend the Lemons, the Historical Society. You mentioned dues. Are they $1,000 a year, $2,000 no, a year? No, no, no. They're more like 5 or $10 oh, a year. Oh, okay, <clears throat> 5 or $10. And your point about volunteers, there is so much work to be done there because there are so many items that need to be classified and cataloged and sorted. And anybody who is interested in helping out, just give us a call and we'll be glad to use you. And it's <clears throat> a wonderful, wonderful experience. It is. It's, it, it's a lot of fun, too. It is. Uh, it is. I, I, I know. Um, gentlemen, is there anything else that you'd like to share with uh, the both to share with both the residents of Lemonster today and really the Lemonster rights of the future? Because we are creating an historical document through this video. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share uh, with the people of the present and the future about that fine neighborhood, French Hill? Any final? Uh, you know, I, I want to say, I want, I'd like to inject this thing just to show my idea of how French Hill, uh, years ago, uh, the people, my, I say my dad ran a grocery store so that uh, most everybody put it on the slip. You know, I mean, you'd come in, get a loaf of bread. Next week, at the end of the week, you'd come in and pay. This man, just to show you the honesty of people, this man's grandfather used to come into my father's store. We never paid any attention, Mr. Trombley coming in. Hi. He would go in and weigh up what he wanted and wrap it up and, and go on the way out. He'd mark it on the slip. Once a week, he'd come in, take his slips, punch in the cash, or he'd put his money in it. <laughs> that is true. I believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how people... You know, you never questioned Mr. Pryor. You, you, well, that was, and nobody got excited because no. Mr. Trambley was doing that or, or the, the valleys were coming in and doing, oh, that was, that was just a normal thing. You knew that mm -hmm. it was, so there was great honesty too. And there were, you know, I'm sure yes. there were, there was bad people too, but I mean, mm -hmm. through the, and, and that's, that, your grandfather did that all the time. He walked into the store. We all said hi. My father would say hi to him. I was a kid. Yeah, very honest. Name. And I have another picture of, of, of this that was taken in, in uh, the late 30s or early, early 40s. My father uh, in the store, and you happen to see signs up on the, you know, advertising things. See? And uh, native Macintosh apples, four pounds for 25 cents. One dozen of, 19, of, of, of 72 size oranges, that's the big ones for 29 cents. Mm -hmm. So that was the difference so in... how the times have how The, the difference times in time. See? Yes. And French uh, Hill, I still think, is a pretty darn nice place. It's I nice. All, it's we have a diversified <laughs> population, but uh, you go to St. Cecilia's Church, and it's mm -hmm. very well attended, and it's kind of nice to be able to go in and see the different nationalities that are participating in the that's, church. That's wonderful. And, and wonderful. you know, it really yeah. is, you yeah. know. Yes. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's uh, so French Hill is, has come a long ways, uh, some good, some bad. But when we were kids, uh, all the women worked at Kluwitz. Oh, yes. They all dressed in their white girl, went to work. 
mm -hmm. and uh, the men all went to Whitney, 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 Whitney Carriage, Whitney Carriage, and a few of them would go over to Tilton Cooks. Mm -hmm. they, a lot of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. All manufa yeah, manufacturing. Yeah, manufacturing was manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Larry. <laughs> Gil. Well, it was looking back. It was just great fun growing up there, and uh, I've lived in Lemster all of my life so far. <laughs> in intent, can, can think of no other place that I'd like to live, really. But I, an interesting comment, it, I guess it's kind of a sociological comment. Um, the three deckers on French Hill provided reasonable housing for people coming in. Most of the time people coming into this country were coming with little money. And so they found something reasonable there. As the years have gone on, the neighborhood has changed, as Larry says. And uh, Recently, a lot of Latin people, Latin American people, have come into that neighborhood. When I was teaching at Lemister High School, I had many of these students, these kids as students, and I found that my growing up there, being bilingual, before we knew what it meant. That's right. <laughs> gave me an understanding of the problems and the outlooks that these kids had as bilingual kids. And seeing their parents come the school not knowing English and having the kids act as interpreters as Larry and I did for our grandparents. Right. And so you see the cycle repeating it itself. And itself. I think that's a fascinating thing. As you mentioned earlier, the melting pot. Right. And it's still going on. Right. Which is a wonderful, wonderful it really, it thing. really is, you know, like we said, yeah. my grandmother came down from Canada with eight kids and bought the house where I live in now, the apartment, you know, mm -hmm. you know and, and uh, she never learned how to speak English. My grandparents never never had to. No, they, no, because they, 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 and, uh, uh, French Hill was their domain. They, they mm. thought that was it. It yeah. was, it was all. <coughs> and she never did learn how to speak no. English. <coughs> well, you remember where we lived, as you said, on yeah. Third Street, with my grandmother. <coughs> if she saw somebody walking along Third Street, if they were walking toward Mechanic Street, no matter what time of the day, they were going to church. And if we were walking towards Spruce Street, no matter what time of day, they were coming home from church. <laughs> that was her orientation. That, that was it. That was yeah. it. That was the whole thing. We had the nuns. Yes. When I was a kid, St. Sears, the nuns were all from France. Yes, they were. They were teaching ah. us in English, mm -hmm. but they could hardly talk English <laughs> and whatnot, yeah. but they were all from France. Yes. You know? that, that order. The, the, that order, yes, the Holy order. Ghost. The Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, French Hill is still a fine place uh, to raise a family to grow mm -hmm. up in, and, uh, and it was in those days also, so as uh, all of the neighborhoods in London still yes. uh, I, Larry uh, and Gil, I want to thank you very, very much for participating in this uh, bit of history, uh, um, where we're sharing reminiscences about the past uh, for the future, one of our purposes. Uh, it's been most interesting. I also want to thank the LATV, uh, Kyle. Uh, I want to thank Jack, Sully, and uh, Todd Robbins, uh, who make the uh, and all the people at uh, LATV, Lemonster Access Television, who make these interviews possible. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Bob, thank you pleasure. very much. For You're welcome. Lots of fun. Asking me to come. Thank you. Thank you.